is the umbrella group that looks after the interests of supporters' trusts uh, around the UK. Supporters trusts are sort of special kinds of supporters groups uh, that are properly organised on a, on a fully democratic basis uh, and who are ready to engage with clubs either at a sort of engagement and dialogue level or in an ideal world to start the process of partly owning or in some cases completely owning their club. We have 40 clubs around the UK who are completely owned by their supporters. The two that are playing today, AFC Wimbledon and Wickham Wanderers, are two of those. I was involved early doors with the start of the uh, Wimbledon Independent Supports Association which basically gave rise uh, to uh, just the fans getting a little bit more organised to protest. We had supporters clubs which were your usual sort of supporters club, you know, picked a player of the year and donated the odd couple of quid to the club to make themselves feel warm and fuzzy. But we found ourselves in a situation where we needed to start sort of, you know, kicking over the statues and getting a little bit irate. We formed an independent support association for that very reason, so that we weren't aligned with the club. When AFC Wimbledon started, Supporters Direct was there to help them, to give them an understanding of what it's like to be a supporter own club and to take them through the process. It was just amazing to hear that there was another organised group above where we were, a little bit more kind of keen on the politics of, of, of how it all works, that were there to sort of help us. And we, we managed to kind of channel that independent support association rage a very organised trust. The initial ideas of the trust of the Wimbledon Supporters Trust was to just get somebody on the board just to tell the, the board what a bunch of idiots they were. At that point we were still kind of willing to sort of say, alright Mr Hitler, if you stop if you stop invading countries nearby maybe we can sit and talk, you know, and then we'd replace them further down the line. Um, but we weren't sitting out to own a football club and run a football club. We were sitting out to get fan representation, which I think is the key for where all this starts. Well, if a group of fans decides that it wants to become the owner of its club and has found a way of doing it and there's enough interest and there's enough support around the community for that to happen, the next question I guess is, is how do we do it? In the case of Wickham, who have been uh, supporter owned clubs twice in their history actually and, and, and are now, uh, the most recent thing we've done for example is to help them with a very large and very successful community share offer that they've just launched. The way we're structured, we have a trust board of 11 people. They are voted for by the, by the members of the trust. So one third of the board stand down every, every three years. So there's an element of continuity, but there's also an opportunity for people to, to vote people off if they don't believe the job we're doing is right. The way we've structured things at the moment is we have a chairman of the football club who is responsible to the trust board. Um, and therefore we give him day-to-day -day control of the club because we believe that is the, the, the right way forward. We have launched a community benefit share scheme and that is designed to get the funds to give us the stability to go forward uh, so that we're not reliant either on borrowing money from individuals or from, or from banks. And that has started off, we've got pledges of 700,000 against a target of 2 million. Most fan ownerships occur uh, at a time of crisis at the club. We had a very fortunate um, kind of timetable where the decision was almost made for us. So we're all sitting pensive waiting for the FA to do the right thing and say, you know, moving a football club 60, 70 miles up the M1 and, and creating the first ever British football franchise is a load of bollocks. And of course they're the FA, so they didn't. And we entered into the process knowing that we couldn't reverse the decision. You know, that was one of the binding conditions. And we said, well, we'll start a new club. And it was kind of that off the cuff, you know, well, we'll start a new club. And we did, so by the time we got to that, we were literally on the phone to the London FA saying, um, hello, we're going to start a new club, what do we need to do? You know, and, and there was a famous post in I wish I'd kept, could be quite a nice frame, where I was scribbling down corner flags and medics and, and, and offence and stuff like that, you know, we had no, literally no idea what we needed to do. And the number of volunteers is three to four hundred, I don't have the exact figure at my fingertips, and they do everything from picking up the litter after a game through to helping us to design a stadium. We're hoping that the planning decision that we're waiting for on the stadium will be delivered end of May and hopefully this first brick will be a year from today. As we were going through all the trials and tribulations of where we should play football after we left, left Flower Lane and we went to Sellers, the club then were always adamant there is no site in Wimbledon and you know there's nowhere big enough which you know if the viewers look to my left and right nowhere big enough is a little bit farcical. I think the special thing today is, is the fact that it's AFC Wimbledon and the fact that they went right back to their grassroots had to. Uh, and have come back up to the Football League. And I think every football fan sees that as a, as, as a huge achievement and they should be rightly proud of what they've achieved. It is about fans being involved and that's what makes it so special. For all the things we've been through and all the games we've won, and I'm talking about getting promoted to the First Division, winning the FA Cup, you can take them all and I'll, I'll swap them all for owning their own stadium and owning their own football club. Because that's just, that's, that's proper fairy tale stuff. Right?